So we do have some standing water here from the last shower. And now I'm curious to see how this looks here to the left. Oh yeah, there is water. So this time, careful Mr. Cat. So this time, this has filled up. This time, there was enough water. So here we go. That is very good. Yeah. But it has not overflown. That our road here. This is just from the very same rain. Yeah, in order to overflow, we need a lot more. But there's even more in the forecast, so it might as well come to the point in the next few days that this is overflowing. And down there, there's the pond, but as you can see, it's getting dark now, so there's probably no point in filming anymore. But you see that puddle there in the middle, that is one of the sediment traps. And this is also full because by now the soil gets saturated and therefore whenever there is an opportunity for the water to stay it will stay and that is what we want that the soil gets saturated and here where we added the straw to the former road there's also something coming up the road is disappearing Actually, on camera, it looks more story from the color than in reality. Camera sees this always in a different way. But soon, this will be just another part of this paddock. And you won't be able to tell that there was ever a road. It is already pretty dark, but I guess you can still see this. So, this is our little dam here. It hardly ever rains, so this project is dragging along. It's not very important. But when it rains, then sometimes this creates a little bit of a problem. No, it is not flowing under the house because there's this grass. This is just the lower area here, which is why it forms this little puddle and now that we noticed that there is a little bit more we quickly moved a little bit of dirt here to just dam it up this is where the um, drench was in order to put the underground cable in and this area will be filled up with some additional dirt and eventually will be the level of this front porch here. But in order to do this, we first need to build a little wall. So there's going to be a wall here in front of that so that the wooden structure of the house is not in direct contact with soil. It sits on top of those cinder blocks and we use the very same cinder blocks and some concrete to make a wall here and then you basically step out and onto um, the ground here that is on the same level as as the porch so like this and I need to say that this house is a temporary structure so this will eventually be removed it is so that we can be here this is not the house the house is a project in the nearer future and because we had some water coming that way and it was starting to create a little river under the house we stopped it in its track by simply digging here a little bit that was done in a couple of minutes and it doesn't really matter because this will be backfilled but this is for summer 
so this is now just for the moment. And of course, as I had been playing with the cat, the doggies want to know what has been going on. So they are very much interested in all the parts that the cat, uh, that the cat touched. Yes, and that is important. Good morning. It's not really getting light. There is some very strange light at the moment because of the fog. I'm a bit late to film it and probably the camera won't do it much justice either. But I wanted to show you this foggy morning and also something else there. So let's walk over there. These guys are in their dog enclosure for this morning and right next to it and it works very well, we do have someone else. So here they are. This is all the calves that we have. There are 17 and that's probably the number for this round. And we created this little, yeah, let's call it a corral to keep them here while the adults are grazing in a different place. They also got some drinking water here. And this used to be another animal lane and it will be in the future again. But for now, we just closed it so that we can keep the calves here while the adults are somewhere else. And uh, there in the background, there's also something that I'm going to show you now. And they are keeping quiet here. And they are not interfering with the calves. After all, they know that they belong here. So there's no barking, no threatening. It's all perfectly cool. So here we made this feeder. The idea is to get them used a little bit to that kind of additional feed. They are still at the point where they rely heavily on milk, but at some point they will transition to other feed, solid feed. Of course it's supposed to be grass, but when there's not enough grass we need to give them some supplemental feed. Especially now during the phase that they are going to grow rapidly, they need energy. And that is what we put in here. So this is basically the training ground. So that they can get used to it. And now you might wonder why this additional feed, if there is not enough forage and so on. Yes, of course, um, it is eventually. We want to have enough forage, that is why we are working on that. Having enough forage means we have fertility. And fertility then provides for all kinds of creatures to be fed well. But in the beginning, we need those ruminants to create the very same fertility. So it's a little bit, yeah, how do you call this, a conundrum. And that means in order to get the benefit from their presence, we also need to keep them alive. And that is why we add supplemental feed in the form of straw, of these alfalfa pellets, and now this feed here. they are bigger they will help us with more animal impact because this is now 17 animals that will turn into those big transformation engines that turn 
plants into processed organic matter that will feed the soil. And then the soil feeds them. And here in this area there is a little bit of forage. They are not that interested just yet, but they nibble here and there. So therefore it's not a problem that this is not the best paddock in the world. It is to get them used to it. And the adults are currently in our paddock A18. That is where the big water tank is. And there's also a part of the seasonal creek in there. This has good forage now and that's perfect for the adults. And later, around midday, they will then be joined by the kids. And they go back to their paddock in the Altiplano, where there is straw and tomorrow they will get some alfalfa pellets up there. As a swamp is forming here at the entrance of Zone C, we are bringing in this old spent straw to turn it into compost. So this is another place where we start a little bit a compost uh, factory. Of course it's not the very very best compost, but it is some organic matter that will turn into soil eventually and why not enlist the help of the bovines for that. See here a sand that came down with the rain. That's the dust. It came from far away. There's also an air quality alert right now, which says that it's not healthy but of course this is just sand but yeah could be a problem so all surfaces somehow are filled with that there was a sandstorm in the Sahara and the sand traveled that far The empty pipe has been buried, so now that this part is done. So it's all underground. There used to be, yeah, there was a plan for a long time to do this. And uh, it's not the highest priority and uh, when you have a Jeep to get around, you don't really care about how well the ground is where you drive on. And so now that this has been buried, you can also continue with that water pipe. So that water pipe will be tucked away here in front of the wall. That wall is for the dog enclosure. And then it will go in that direction. And in this other um, flexible pipe, we will put in electricity cables and stuff like that once we get around to build that barn over there. And just as a little detail, this green cable there is a cable that connects the solar inverter to the solar panels. It's a temporary thing and once the barn has been built then the panels will move 
Or maybe we do another intermediate step. There are some plans to create a stanchion and put the panels up there. As long as we have power, that is not the most important thing. So we really have to juggle with all the different tasks that we have on our list. I should probably give you another update and show you how our yeah, task board looks like at the moment. Except for the horses, no other animals and of course uh, the few sheep that are still left. Um, nobody really walks or eats here. So it's all full of mustard. This whole area turned yellow and for some reason there is a lot more of the mustard this time than it used to be in previous years. Of course at the very very beginning this was also yellow but then it kind of disappeared and now it is back with force. So very impressive. So even around here and I guess that's because of the rain. It all looks a lot taller and lush. But then we have to keep in mind that from the top, so this here is not a paddock, I have to say as well, this is also an animal lane and it's even a kind of a road, but rarely used. So you can see how this looks from the top. There is some clover also coming up. But then of course here in this particular place, that's not a good measure because it's not supposed to be used for grazing. But still interesting. And here where the chickens are, there are only two left. But um, you can see this green stuff here. And we have all the Sahara sand that is on it. There will be rain later tonight and then we will see what will happen. It might be that there will be more of it when it gets washed out of the air or it will eventually be cleaned up. It's quite interesting. This here is the old stone house. In Spanish that's called Cortejo. And the guys every morning make a little bit of a fire using this wood here and we also have a few sausages hanging here and we can use them for breakfast and uh, for other types of meals and we are trying a little bit to make this place a little bit more comfortable and more useful and one of the things that we did we started to install these outlets because now that we have satellite internet here, Starlink, that really works. So it's very great. We have 60 megabit of upload and 280 of download. So that is basically the same thing as fiber optics in the city. So we have this here, but it comes from the sky, actually from space. But that means that we need now a better place to put the antenna. Right now it's a temporary installation. So this will be put on a mast that is connected, that is fixated to um, the side of this uh, building. And then we have the device that it needs, the router, inside of this closet here that was there. So suddenly we are definitely in the 21st century and have some Wi-Fi in here. Because there's almost no cell phone reception because the walls are so thick that the signal does not penetrate, but with the Wi-Fi, the guys then can also use our applications and look something up on the internet. So that will improve a little bit this, and we can have some office time in here as well. And speaking about the office time, so this here is our task board. And I think I take the opportunity to show you a little bit what is going on and uh, what is on this ever yeah, growing list of things to do and uh, the list that I always mention, yes, yes, um, there are many things to do. So let me show you what these things are. So of course this is all in Spanish because it is um, for the guys and they speak Spanish. 
So there at the top, it says something about common infrastructure, that um, green card, and below that green card is a blue one. The blue ones mean that is a task or that is a step in the journey. And then the yellow ones are concrete things, but it's not something that you can achieve by simply doing it. So it is more of a detailed objective. And the white ones are then actual tasks that you might be able to do, but it might be that we have to break them down a little bit. So to give you a few examples, I won't tell you what each and every card mean, but there we have infrastructure for common things. And then we have support for regenerative agriculture. And then we have things like um, an installation for the water here in the compound. And we have something like um, the nursery that we want to have. And then we have also a column where it's about security. By that I mean that nobody has an encounter with a rusty nail and then has other problems. And then we have the other big topic, restoration of the soil. So there we have a step to augment the biomass. And related to that is what we want to do with the mules and CT2. And we want to put some more weighty wear in certain places. And then we have the rotational grazing. There is a target, just to be reminded. It says there are change paradoxes one or seven times per day. So that is one of the goals, but at least do it one time, uh, one, once per day. And uh, the yellow cards there mean to reduce uh, the size of those temporary paradoxes so that we can turn them into three or even four. I hope that of the 10 temporary paradox we might get out up to 30 individual ones. That would be very helpful. And then of course you have the big topic about the animal movement. So this is now all the tasks that are related to control their movement. And then we have a special topic, seeding with the help of um, pigs. So sembra con cochinos it says there. Uh, that is this card up there. So there are a few tasks, um, a few goals or objectives. So we need to put a perimeter fence around our zombie so that these pigs won't escape and do damage in other places. Then we have retention of water. We have the topic of shade, sombra in Spanish. And then the next topic, and that is related to the chicken, or actually to the hens, how to um, sanitize paddocks. So the idea is that there might be larvae or, or other um, parasites developing in those paddocks. And then the cows or other ruminants will ingest them. And in order to avoid that, we take them out before that happens and put in the chicken so that the chicken eat that because for them that is food. And then when the animals come back, the paddock has been sanitized. So that is the why and uh, the how is then use chicken. And therefore we have an objective to make those um, egg mobiles or mobile chicken coops. But then we have also a red card right next to it, how to protect them from avian flu. Because here we do have this during the um, colder months. And then there we have another few red cards. This is about restrictions put forth by the authorities. So here and there we have to comply with some things. And one is an event that comes up in June. There it says saneamiento vacas. That means the vet needs to do an inspection. And this is mostly for tuberculosis. And also we have a kind of a sorting facility. We have a portion of that. We need to continue to make it easier to handle our herd. It worked a few times already with the temporary version of it, but we are trying to create this uh, very nice um, structure with three circles, according to the design that Temple Grandin has um, put up on the internet. So we are trying to do that. And we are missing the second circle where there is a um, door in there, a gate, a squeeze gate, 
to move them forward instead that we do something from outside or even get in there. Our kettle is very docile, but in general it's a bad idea, so we definitely want to have that. And at the end, we have things like um, pastured eggs, huevos de pasto, and we need a place to store them temporarily until we deliver them. Based on that comes other tasks. Then there's campamento de restauración, that means a place for visitors. So that maybe you guys can come and pitch a tent and you need some infrastructure like a shower and uh, of course uh, you might need to go to the bathroom and things like that and also a place to eat and gather so this is that. Nothing planned yet because we have too much on our plate but eventually it should be there and we want to do that. And then we have products. Products uh, based on the bovines and products based on the pigs. And in order to actually have products, we need to cover the topic of dairy production. And based on that, we need a place to treat a sick animal and all that. And of course, that is again related to the restrictions. We cannot breed pigs until we have certain infrastructure. We can breed bovines and horses. We don't need any for that, according to the authorities. But we won't get the permit to breed pigs unless we have a place where we can quarantine the pigs. And that is because the authorities are afraid of um, an illness that is uh, brought by wild boars and maybe some other things. So they insist that we have a quarantine area and that quarantine area has to be made of metal or plastic or concrete and it has to be also completely enclosed so that no birds can come in and there are a few other requirements. So that is the very long list that I keep telling you guys about and this is how it looks like. And then eventually the white cards end up in this lower part. You see there Monday to Friday, lunes, martes, miércoles, jueves y viernes. So there the guys plan what they want to do. And for example, tomorrow they will do something in the area B2 and also they will try to put some thick fence post that is related to this task here, which is about the perimeter fence in our zone B. So this is how it goes and you can see there is quite a lot of things to do and uh, what the guys also want to finish on Monday or whenever there is an office day because it rains is this one here. So we want to create a game plan, a list of material and exactly the steps. So here there will be a door for this temporary, for this paddock and there will be a fence and we need that and that material and those insulators and all the other things so that we can plan this in very small tasks that we can achieve and complete, completely finished, within less than one day. And that is what happens on this task board down here. So far, so far it's looking good, but of course this is something new. None of the guys has worked in this way before. It's, uh, yeah, it comes from another industry basically. Uh, it's more like the Toyota production system or Scrum and Kanban things in software development. But it is useful in any kind. And uh, if you are interested in more details, Google, for example, for something like lean farming does exist. And this is basically the same thing. So we are trying to get a little bit more organized. And like I said, I wanted to show you what else we have on our plate. Of course, this is not static. This changes every week a little bit. But you can see, we definitely are keeping busy. That was it for today's videos. Please keep the suggestions coming. I do appreciate them. They are very interesting and helpful. 
Eventually, many of them will be considered and show up on the task board at some point. But be patient. There are lots of conflicting priorities and somehow we need to get everything in line and manage our existing resources and manpower. But it will all come together. So I hope this uh, walk about the task board was interesting and helpful. And other than that, please come back in a few days when this continues. Till then, enjoy! <laughs>